Hi, Peter Charles here, Folk for Life Fly Fishing. And a few days ago, I released a video on how to read trout water. Now, in that video, I featured an elbow pool and talked about the difficulties of fishing that pool. So today, uh, I went out there and fished the upstream side with a full sinking line. And I'll give you a chance to see how I approached it. So, let's take a look. Okay, I'm out of that elbow pool. I described in my previous videos. And in order to fish this pool properly, you need a, a full sinking line. And I'm using the Airflow Streamer Max Short. And I've got a heavily weighted fly on the end of it. Which you have to handle really well. I'll feed a little bit of line in. Now, I'm working the uh, upstream end of the pool, so I'm using a heavily weighted fly that will dig down. Because if I used a, a lighter fly in here, in current, it'll be held up by the current. And there's a limited amount of things I can do here. I've got deadfall all over the place. So I'm just relying on a fish to be underneath this current that I'm currently fishing. I really can't fan to the left or the right very much because of deadfall. I can do a little bit, but not much. I've got trees and logs and everything all over the place. So it really does limit what I can do. Now, if, you, if you're not used to using full sinkers, you can roll them up, pull them out smoothly, and send them on their way, just like that. Now, I can count this down and take a chance, but I'm not going to be too much on bottom that this, the current will hold it up. And I'm going to use a slow strip so it leaves that fly dangling. So I'm relying on the, the construction of this line with this intermediate belly to uh, keep it up enough in current so I don't snag up. Now I bump bottom, good, that's what I want to feel, is bumping a few of those stones in the, in the shallow stuff. This is not elegant casting. And because of the type of fish I'm likely to hit, I mean, if I get it, I mean, it's almost midday, bright sun. I mean, the odds are not in our favor. But uh, this is the kind of thing you want to do. I'm using a six weight. I'm not using a little four or five weight or even a three weight rod. I'd normally come in here with lighter tackle. But if you're going to hook into a, a big fish in a pool that um, has so much deadfall in it, you really can't afford to um, be using wimpy tackle. I've got uh, a drag uh, on this reel is quite good. I'll be able to uh, stop a fish if it starts heading for the deadfall, or hopefully stop a fish. I've got a uh, 10 pound uh, tippet on the leader, so I've got a chance of keeping them out of the deadfall. The rod is a nine foot six weight Loomis Asquith. Excellent rod for this. Beautiful rod for this kind of fishing. Lots of backbone. And I'm really not covering a whole lot of this pool because it's just not uh, much of ability to get around and there's so much deadfall. So um, one of the things I can do is I can change my angles a little bit move out a little bit into the current and you can see how slow I'm stripping. One of my headstander flies that I've got on here. Big lead eyes, big rabbit strip wing which gets really heavy when it's soaking wet. I mean this is, you just lob it out there, you don't get fussy. Now the pool is deep so I can take a chance here of feeding line in. So I'm going to pull it back in, roll cast it up. Now I'm just going to use the current to feed some line in, get a little bit more sink. You can see how deep this is. I'm using a full sinker with a clouser style fly that sinks like a rock. And I, I'm only touching bottom when I get close to the lip here. 
Oh, was it, what was that? That could have been a bump from a small fish. Unfortunately, I'm limited to just handling this little bit of current here. This is about all I can do. Too many trees, too much deadfall to fan too much. If I didn't have the deadfall problem, I would be fan casting. So I would be starting from my right and, and moving to my left. And that will give me a chance to um, uh, cover water the, the way you need to do. Uh, and if I was using a floater with a mouse pattern, I could get away with it because, oops, I'm bumping bottom. That's good. That's a good sign. That's down where I want to be. The, this particular headstander fly, you look at it on my website, it's a fly that's designed to get down but avoid snagging up. And it does that quite well. S slip line into the back cast, and away you go. And then I'll just feed the line in. Again, not elegant. Okay, now bring it back. The thing to keep in mind when you're dealing with a pool like this, which is very, st except for this current, is quite slow, quite still. In some places it's almost dead still. Big fish will treat it like a lake, so they'll cruise. They're not going to hang in one spot. They're going to move around. And uh, that gives us the advantage of uh, just continually casting into the same spot and waiting for a cruising fish to move into our uh, line. So just feed some line into it. Now I'm working this uh, right hand seam. The left seam has got a, a big ugly lug. I'll probably put a cast a little bit to the left and hope for the best. If you hear rude words you'll know I hit the lug. But that log is a good opportunity for a fish to sit underneath it. There. Now I'll just... That log is just about where I, my fly landed. I'm going to use the current to swing it on that seam. Now bring it over this way. Feed line. That should be just clear of the log but close enough that the fish would see the fly. This is a big enough fly that a big fish will move for it. And the current is strong enough I can just let it sit on the dangle. Don't be afraid to do that. When you've got current working for you, you just have to move your rod tip from one side of the current to the other and your fly will just move across. Slip some line back so the fly drops slowly back. Now bring your rod tip on the other side and let it come back across again. It's, you know, it's a great way to cover water without casting. Give it time, a couple of strips, move it on this side, feed some line. When you're feeding line, don't dump the line, let it slide out of your hand. Two reasons a fish could hit it, and B, your fly suddenly looks dead. And, and you want that, uh, you know, fly to look good. Bumping bottom. Oh! Oh! Well, had a fish hit. That felt like it had some size to it. If the fish just hit the tail, there's a good chance he might come back. In a pool like this, at this time of day, with this bright sun, you have to be right down in the stones. I mean, the fish are just not going to come up. So I, I'm feeling the fly bumping along the bottom, which is exactly what we want to feel. A fish will hang below this current because it gives them cover and it brings food to them. So this sitting on this current is probably the best thing I can do today. Now, one of the problems when you're distance casting and you're in current and you've got a lot of running line, there's a lot of drag from the water on your running line, from the current on your running line, and you're gonna be limited by distance. If I wanted to get maximum distance here, I'd be using a stripping basket. Uh, which is what I'd use in the salt water. Um, because when you're dangling a line in the current like this, the drag of the current on the line is going to really reduce the distance that you can get. And you, you can work with small loops like I'm doing here uh, and hope for the best. 
It's a choice between distance and tangling. So we just roll cast it up, drop your loops. There we go. Normally, if I didn't have that tree behind me, I'd be letting out a lot more line on my back cast, slipping a lot more line, which will get me more distance going forward. If you're trying to maximize your distance and you don't want to do a lot of false casting, you don't want to do false casting with a sinking line, is slip line into your back cast so you get as much line behind you as you possibly can. And then when you fire forward, you get a chance at a decent cast. Oh, I'm snagged. Let's hope I got it off. Yeah. Whoa! Fish number two that I missed. There's something big down there. He didn't break me off, good. So again, I'm gonna use my the current to slip line out. I think what's happening with those two hits is they grab the tail of the fly. The tail is quite long. Browns usually hit the head, but it's possible we've still got a steelhead or two lurking around, and the steelhead will hit the tail. Oh, that's something on the bottom I just hit. So those hits could have come from a, you know, a late leaving steelhead. Also, yeah, nothing on it. Okay. That's possible. Both of them were felt like more like they hit the tail of the fly. So this is going to be my last. I'll put one more cast in and we'll call it a day. But you can see the uh, type of approach we use here. Don't be afraid to slip line. Uh, using the Airflow Streamer Max with this intermediate belly run it, floating running line and its uh, high density tip allows me to uh, keep the fly down, get it down, but in a controlled fashion. Uh, the action of the current on that intermediate belly will help me to keep it from dragging bottom too much because if I use a, a true full sinker in here that was all sinking line, I would have problems. I would uh, be dragging bottom, snagging up constantly. This gives me control. So uh, we had two good hits, so which is surprising considering the conditions. And um, you get a chance to see what it's like to fish a deep elbow pool from the upstream side. Best time to come out would have been early morning, late evening, and then you have a lot more options. At this time of the day, there's not a lot you can do. So, give it a try. Don't be afraid of elbow pools. Just use the right kind of line, right kind of fly, and you're off to the races. Cheers.